Hey, muy buenas noches to everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. Y como siempre, enjoying family. And thank you, Tony, again, for allowing me to get on your platform. Stories written by a current prisoner to share my stories. And before I start off, again, muchísimas gracias to everyone for, you know, for your kind words and for taking the time to write them down as well for you guys' prayers. They really do mean a lot. I know I sound like a broken record, but, you know, I can't, you know, stop expressing my, my appreciation for you. Gracias de nuevo. Now for the story, <clears throat> it's going to center around how how things were when when I actually moved out of Eloy. So like I stated before, I was I was in Eloy and there was a big old a big old war going on with you know with the Arabs there and uh, I don't I don't even know to be sincere what it was about. But at the end of the day, we were back there and we in the hole and they didn't want us there. You know, when when we had paperwork from California that we've been slammed down in the shoe, validated, they thought that we were, we were gonna basically make the problem bigger. So I went out to my first court in Eloy and my lawyer told me, you know, you shouldn't be here. I don't know why they brought you here being a citizen so when we go out to court, say you're gonna file your case, it, it might take from two to three years and, you know, but let me figure things out and then we'll take it from there. So that's exactly what I did. I went out and I said I was gonna fight my citizenship. So that happened, then they ended up, you know, coming up and told me to pack my stuff up to transfer. So they ended up taking me all the way to USP, Pennsylvania. And first of all, I was like, damn, where am I going? You know, this was all new to me for one. And then at the same time, the thoughts running through my head was, you know, how did the program work over here? Cause I don't wanna, you know, get from Cali and basically bring a program that's not permitted. Cause I know, I know for a fact that, you know, they actually compete with each other. But needless to say, you know, I got there, I sat down my classification time and in classification, I actually, they sought me and I'm appeal and they basically expressed who was on the yard. And there was, there was quite a couple uh, appeals there but the one that stuck out the most to me, to be sincere, was uh, was the Senora Sana, you know, from Santana. Cause mainly cause all the camaradas from OC they really talk highly about about the Senor. So you know, I wanted to to be sincere to get to know to get to know the Senor. And so I went out to yard and. Needless to say, you know, I had the, I could say the pleasure of getting to know him because uh, he was one of those, you know, that he did use Chiwa and, but uh, he was feeding with camaradas. That means, I mean, in the sense that, you know, he didn't minimize no camarada. He always took him into consideration, at least the ones that were there with us. But, you know, from the gate, it was, it was just different, you know, everything where we were taught in Cali, it was, it just went out the window. For example, you know, you were able to, you were able to, to do business with, with other races, mainly because there's quite a lot different ones there. And, but the one that stuck out to me the most was, uh, we were able to work with Norteños, you know. Uh, at this time, there was no NF no NF there, but there was quite a couple uh, NR members. And I remember that I started doing a couple a couple moves with them, you know, mainly cause, uh, you know, my people weren't far from where they were from, 
for example, I got real real close with Gigi from Hayward and signing from Torer, Toler, excuse me. And uh, we started doing things, you know, I started having my people go down and, and take work and they were getting visits up there. So we started connecting and, uh, you know, one day it's, it was a big old thing that happened. Well, it wasn't like a big old frasa thing, you know, cause uh, we were sitting down and we were conversating and uh, the Pilisana started telling me like, like, look, this is how it runs here. Here, the only ones we gotta look look out for is mainly the the Aztecas and mainly all those people from, you know, from the East Coast. And he start he started giving me clutch on how everything worked, and uh, he basically told me, you know, these guys, you know, they're Norteños, but then the day, you know, we're from Cali, and well. While they're here and we keep it respectful, we're able to, to do things with them. But when, when after this conversation, maybe two, three days after this conversation, you know, I actually, I actually got to like Gigi a lot. You know, he was a, he was a firme vato, you know, real cool. We, we went out there, there was a, couple times that, that we were able to to basically have good conversations, you know. He had a lot of family that that lived out there where I'm from and we were able to connect, you know, in, in different ways. We left all that all that Sur Norte behind and, and we had some some man to man conversations on other on other issues. And plus we were doing things but one day at Chaho, I guess there was a there was a, a fool from Florida, you know. He was a he was a brother, and basically he wanted to burn Gigi. So you know, Gigi, he he was a hothead, you know. So he told me, you know, hey, hey, because we were there one day, and uh, it just happened that the señor was there with us, and as as we're there. I guess Gigi, the Africano passed by and Gigi was telling him like, hey, what's up with that? And to, and the Africano got, got loud, you know, he got he got crazy. So Gigi told him, ah, it's whatever, next yard, the next yard, next yard, we'll conversate better, you know? So the brother kept strolling and while he stayed behind that, you know, the the senor asked him, you know, hey, what's up? What are you going to do? And he was like, I'm going to go inside and go ahead and and get me a piece. And next yard, I'm, I'm going to have to hoop bang on him, you know, take care of it. Because I, I'm going to be the one on this yard to be getting burnt. And to my surprise, you know, the, the, the senor looked at me and he told me, like, hey, I want you. I want you to go ahead and support him, you know, apoyalo. And I was like, you know, dispuesto. First off, cause I I, I liked I liked the bottle, you know. And second of all, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know that was possible to be sincere. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't gonna put it in the you know in the pili years like yeah I think this, this individual's a real good person or nothing like that. But needless to say, you know, we went in and. Uh, Basically, we got ourselves a little piece, and uh, next year we went to town on him, you know. And uh, that was another thing that that really surprised me, you know, because uh, we went to town on homeboy, and uh, yeah, they grabbed us, took us to the hole, but the time back there in the hole was <laughs> was very limited, you know. We were there for a little bit behind a pegada and then they kicked us back out. And and it was a and it was a big surprise to me, to be honest with everyone that, you know, <clears throat> maybe a week or two after I got out that you know the Tabato Gigi he 
he decided to check in for some reason. And to be sincere, I, I couldn't understand it, but you know, he was going through to quite a couple a couple illness, you know, personal personal things. So I'm thinking it had to do with that, you know, he just decided that th he wasn't uh he wasn't fit to be running around and he was getting short to the house. But it was a big surprise. As well as as I was there, you know, there was a, a senor, you know, from Alley Boys there too. And uh, a big surprise to me was that uh, Big Nose Crook from Alley Boys drove up. He, he landed on there and had a lot of history with this camarada because we went back to to Ironwood. I don't know if you guys recall him from, from my past stories. And we got there and, uh, well, he got there, excuse me. And, uh, and we started conversating and uh, he was, he was a good dude. He was a good dude. You know, at the end of the day, when I met him in Ironwood, he was a little reckless fool, but uh, he had a, uh, he had meddled down, meddled down, you know, mentally, and he had a lot more clutch up, but uh, he was one of those that, <laughs> man, he was just a knucklehead, man. He wanted uh, to go to war over everything. And it was a big surprise because uh, he wasn't like that when we were over there in Ironwood. But needless to say, you know, within the next couple months that I was there, uh, I would get real close with, with Crook from Alley Boys. And it was all due to, well, it happened just one day. We were out there, we are getting a, getting a workout on a little bit. And he, the camarada gets there and he tells me like, hey, hey fool, let's take a lap. Let's to have a conversation. So we started strolling and he started he starts telling me, you know, like like hey fool look, you know, we want you the the senor, you know, want wants me to conversate with you about maybe working together in some aspects, you know. But you know, he wants he wants you to keep that between us and not, not tell the Pili the Pili, you know, Sana. So when he said this right away, it was like a red flag for me, you know, because uh, up until this point, everything was mellow, everything was cool, you know, and uh, slowly but surely, it's just, I think it's just something they can't help, you know, and start politicking or start doing things in uh, undermining one another, you know, or I don't know how to put it, but it was just, uh, basically he wanted to, to start doing things on the yard, but he didn't want to share, you know, he wanted to do his thing. It's basically, you know, that, that Tecato, and I know a lot of people don't like me saying Tecatos, but, you know, to me, that's, that's those, these are exactly Tecatos moves, you know. You start doing things to, you know, to be better than the next man. And to me, that's not proper, you know. We're walking the same, the same causa. We should respect one another, you know. Besides, camaradas, pilis, ek, you know. So I told him right away, you know, like, hey, I'm willing, I'm willing to do whatever I need to do as a camarada, you know. But at the same time, don't put me in the middle of anything like this, my boy. You know, it's just things I don't want to be part of. Tell the senor that with all due respect, yeah, I'm, I'm willing. Whatever he needs done, we can make it happen one way or another. And if I can't, I'll let him know right away. So by this time, he knew, you know, I think that what happened is that he figured out that I was able to put, you know, put work in the, in the, and our members out there. And, and when they were hit, you know, I was... I was showing love to, to Sana, and it just, uh, one day is just one of those things, you know, that, that always comes back to the same thing, you know, camaradas getting used for, for dumb stuff, you know, because there was a camarada there, just one day, 
you know, just out of the blues, the the camarada Nacio, I think he was from Anaheim, started stabbing the started stabbing the homie, the homie from La Habra, Payaso, and for for a while they were investigating because nobody knew what it was behind, but it, it came out that he basically the camarada Nacio was under under Joe. And Payaso was under Sana. So it was like a power move, you know, that they were doing. And, you know, like I always say in, in my recordings, it, it has to do with them always being jealous of one another. Because uh, this came out to air and, you know, it, it almost happened to the point where, you know, a faction was going to, they were going to go at, they were going to go at it on the yard. It was... The camarada Chino, he eaten her mean, and uh, he basically put a stop to it, you know. He reminded mainly Joe, you know, that, you know, when you politic against another carnal, that, you know, that could be your ticket. But the thing I want to pinpoint here is just uh, how there is no, no type of... Uh, it's just how always, you know, camaradas from from the señores, it don't matter how female señores, there is no type of sensitivity for them. You know, for example, these two camaradas, well, one, he was just under one, you know, supporting him. And the other one was just basically trying to remove, you know, the other one's uh, soldados. And it shouldn't be like that, you know. They should be looking at at us following suit and just doing doing the the causa movement, you know. Instead of helping each other, they're they're out there hurting one another. Well, at least camaradas, you know, because uh, if, if they were really wanted to man up, you know, they were able to touch each other. They were able to, you know, pick a piece and go ahead and do that. But you know, they're aware that. If they move on each other, then that's it too. So the best option was to have one camarada go after the other, and once they hit, they hit the back. The next, you know, the señor from from Lomas puts them both on the hat, you know, for doing that. Cause uh, as it was, we were real short on the yard. So from them to be stepping on each other's toes, it was it was a no no, but it was happening. And, uh, you know, I didn't know at that at this time, you know, you know, Joe was, was out there in Santana trying to, you know, trying to step in on Santa's toes, too. So it was just a big old power struggle, you know, the common thing amongst them, you know, that uh, they get greedy. They get greedy, and instead of waiting their turn, they they see that it's easier to to take out not the pili per se, but take out all the cameras underneath them, and just a big old power struggle happens. And this is exactly how you know the S and Y yards got full, you know, because they're always they're always using cameras, and basically you did something that you weren't supposed to, and you're gonna go on the hat too. And that's exactly the message that I've been putting out here, you know, for those that are still on the streets, man. Just uh, stay true to to yourself, you know. Prison is just something that is going to lead you to a lifetime of, man, of just going through struggles and, and pain. You know, you're going to go through pain because, uh, you know, in, in my coming stories, I'm going to get into a story how, you know, supporting, supporting Joe and Chino in 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 a in a topic that I bros there, how I got whacked, you know, and uh, man, I I really thought this was gonna be it, you know, but uh, thank you God that it was just another another bump I had to go through in life, but you know, for the story I just wanted to share with everybody how. My experience when I got there and uh, how it went, you know, from a one eight, it went a one eighty degrees. You know, I got there, 
At first, I had the pleasure of meeting the Billys and uh, mainly, you know, Sana, because uh, he was always talk highly about, you know. But in short time, I was able to see that it didn't really matter, you know, if they're a federal faction or state faction, they're still they're still going after after one another, you know, and tossing to the side camaradas, just like they are in the in the state, you know. Basically, they they use and abuse camaradas, you know. And uh, another time was uh, when this this uh, you know got got highlighted for me was uh, man a camarada was supposed to. He was supposed to get clavo, you know, it was, it was pasas, pastillas, and, uh, for some reason, his family member couldn't come, and, uh, uh man, I seen the Pili, the Pili Sana, because I was actually sitting there with them at this time, and, uh, how he spoke to him, man, now, uh, how he basically threatened him that either we'll get him up here, or, well, that's your butt, you know, just make sure you let him know that, if they don't get up here, that you're through. You're through. The minute this visit happens and I don't see you go out there, at that same moment, you know, you're done. But, you know, I'm putting it in kind words. And it's just something that, me sincere, I, I, I never got talked down to me like that, you know, at least not face to face. Or, yeah, they, they put, you know, as little old to me uh, uh, a lot of times, but not in those words, the way, you know, the Billy expressed himself in this, this occasion. And it just seems to, man, it just amazes me, you know, how, how camaradas, we get put, you know, through so much stuff. And there is a lot of camaradas that do a lot of shady stuff, but, Overall, you know, there's a lot of loyalty there, you know, in Sudanians, and I include myself in this because I was one of those, you know, that I knew what was good and what wasn't, but at the end of the day, you know, it was me either do it or, you know, get, go to the other side or, you know, just stand my ground, which wasn't going to be nothing, to be sincere. I w so I ended up doing it anyways. And it's just, uh, it's just amazing on, on, on what comes next, you know, my story, how, man, how I was so stupid and so blind, and I continued to push this, this causa, even when I had options, you know, and, uh, you will see why, but, you know, for this, I just wanted to share my experience with meeting the Pili Sana and, uh, and Big Joe Chino, the homie from Lomas, there was a, another Pili from Marticia there, and, but I, I will get into that in, in, in my next recording, but before I end this recording, I want to give you guys uh, a sincere apology, you know, mainly because uh, I know there's been delay on, on the up, uploading of videos, it's just, you know, the boy Tony, he's having a little struggle with uploading for some reason. I couldn't really tell you what it is, but, you know, we're here. And uh, as long as, uh, you know, I'm still walking, uh, I'll make sure I put my story out there in the hopes that, you know, it could benefit someone, at least in a positive way, you know. Use it as a, uh, look what this pendejo went through, you know, and uh, to move, push to a different direction but with this said i'm gonna let you guys rest please apologize i apologize too i sincerely apologize if if i really sound todo tonto on this video but man i'm going through it like really bad man you know it's so it's been a a tough a tough week you know to be sincere I've been landing in emergency for for different reasons and I just I just don't know what to think. You know, the fact is I need I need to start doing the surgeries or or just uh 
or just comes to terms with with not doing them and just letting just letting time hit, you know. But you know, please forgive me about this, and I hope I made sense for you on my on my recording this time. But I do, I I send my love to everyone, and as I always say before I end the video, you know. Stay true to yourself and always stay loyal to your family, to those that count. Muchas gracias y muy buenas noches.